In this week's episode, we find out if the Honda Ballade is worthwhile choice for the daily drive. Bucky's from Isuzu and Nissan go under the spotlight. And we discuss ways excessive fuel consumption can be reduced in a Ford EcoSport. Hello and welcome to Buyer's Guide, the show that is dedicated to providing you with invaluable guidance when it comes to buying, selling or maintaining a vehicle. Joining us in studio this week to answer those tricky automotive questions are Putin Piani from Business Day and GC Lukela from BMW Santon. Once again, welcome back guys, good to see you back in studio. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> Thank you for joining today. us guys. <laughs> if you have a question for the team, you can send it to Buyer's Guide at Ignition TV. .co.za or you can pop us a DM on Instagram at Ignition TV and please give us as much information as possible including a nice picture of yourself. All right gentlemen let's get into our first question and come from Marcus who is seeking advice on which SUV to purchase within a budget of 300,000 Rand. He plans to keep the car for 10 years and use it for day-to-day -day activities. The options include the Nissan Magnite Center 1 litre turbo, Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Kia Sonnet, Honda CRV, Cherry Tigo 4, and the Mahindra XUV W8 1.5 diesel. Which of these SUVs would offer the best value for money considering long term ownership and daily use? Puti? Well, first, let's correct Marcus. These are not SUVs, these are crossovers. <laughs> <laughs> a CRV? Is that a crossover? That is a crossover. An SUV is a big thing. Yeah. Use, utilize for sports utility. Well, we know what they're talking about. It's a small SUV. <laughs> exactly. We're doing our part in yes. this. Educating. Our yeah, educating our viewers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and for me, for, for a daily drive, I would look at uh, the Magnite and uh, the Kia Sonnet. Those are pretty small little nimble things, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the Honda CRV is bigger than all of these, hey? Way. So that there, Adam is right, is an SUV. No, it's still a crossover. But it's way bigger than all these. So if it was me, for a daily ride and weekend use and whatever, I'd definitely go for the CRV. The CRV? Yeah. So his budget of 300,000 Rand is going to get him a re reasonable CRV, GS GC? It's going to be older uh, CRV because yeah. they, they, they tend to hold value better because they're very popular. But like anything, it's older. It's like me, it's wiser. <laughs> <laughs> You say so. Here we go. <laughs> um, I, I actually have two two options. So the one is is uh, actually a friend of mine just bought one of these Kia Sonats. Uh, they're really cool, pretty little, small little cars. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in Maroon. Yeah, they're nice. nice. They're yeah. very nice cars. But the other is actually quite interesting. Thinking about the idea of long term ownership is uh, a friend of mine also is looking at a, a Sherry Tigo Four. And uh, I was surprised to hear that the warranty is a million kilometers. Yeah, well, loads of and and 10 seasons. years. <laughs> <laughs> loads of terms uh, and permissions. Well, I've never heard of a car with 10 years and a million kilometers warranty. Remember, that's only on the engine. Ah. And there are stipulations. And you need to be the you, yes. you need to have owned it yourself. You need to be from the original owner. Original. Oh, but they'll be the original owner. Yeah. So they'll get covered for 10 years. Sure. That's just well, even if they don't comply with that you still get a five-year hundred thousand hundred and i think it's hundred and fifty thousand warranty on that car yeah so it is a, it's an option to have a look at but in terms of really good reliability and things are going to last the honda crv i think would be a great option i like the kia sonnet as well just the basic uh, i think it's a 1.6 putty is it yes i one think you have one don't you mate you have a crv no, I've, no, I'm talking about the Kia Sonnet. Oh, I've, had, I've had a number of Hondas, and I love Hondas, as we all know, because I see from my clients, very reliable, very spacious, well mm. put together cars. It's the kind of car that you can, you know you can buy, and you can say, well, I'm going to keep this for 10 years. Mm. He's missed one. What's that? Toyota RAV4. Yeah, that's, I mean, if you can get it 300,000, the problem is... You're going to get an older one. You're going to get an older one. First but generation, unicorn. Yeah. You're going to get an older one, <laughs> and with Toyotas, I don't cute. care how old it is <laughs> and how many kilometers on the it's clock. A Toyota, yeah. it's, a it's a Toyota, it's going to take you. It'll last him 15 years. Yeah. yeah and you, so. I think with the Kia Sonnet and the Suzuki Brezza and even the Tiga 4, you're going to get something that's maybe two or three years old. Yeah. With the, the, the Honda, you must probably be looking at something five years old. Um, so, and, the, and the Brezza, you must probably also get something that's, well, 300,000 Rand, you could must probably, you can go and buy. A Suzuki Franks, brand new, out of the box. The GL 
I think it's the GL version. Nice little car. And it's a lovely car with everything that you want. You're going to get warranty. You're going to get service plan. You're going to get brand everything. spanking new. And There's you're one. going to get change. So I think you've listed a number of great cars, but I think the best one in here, go and look at this. Go to Suzuki. Get yourself a Franx. Just go and buy one. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to yeah. move on now. So Nipu from Peter Marisburg is embarking on a journey to find his first car within his budget of approximately 250,000 Rand. He's seeking a reliable daily driver and weekend travel companion to visit family in Durban. Having worked in Honda's after-sales department, Nipo is considering a 2021 Honda Ballard 1.5 Comfort or 2018-2019 Civic 1.8 Elegance. Despite concerns about front passenger airbag recalls, please recommend a vehicle. Well, we know the problem with the airbag recalls. It's not really... Honda, it's all the Japanese manufacturers, actually worldwide, all the cars, because of a particular manufacturer. So I wouldn't even worry about that because those recalls would have been sorted out. Mm -hmm. Let's go to you, GC. What do you so think? So Ballard, because it's clear, they're, they're not buying another brand. Honda is the car. And I think the Ballard, I think they get a slightly newer car, um, especially if they, they're going to be keeping it for a while, five to ten years, that's a long time. So the newer they can get the car, the better. Um, Civic will be bigger. Uh, there's always, I mean, on this show, we always talk about jazz, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they're all the same family. I just think it's a question of packaging and how, how new you'd like the car to be. Maybe they need a little bit more space. They're going to have to go a little older. Yeah. Pudi? Uh, because it's Honda, and as we did say, that it outlives the owners. Um, I, I wouldn't go with the Ballard. You know, that looks too avious. Um, for, for my liking. Uh, to Avis. It looks, it looks like a rental car. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, rental <laughs> cars, companies buy rent. Exactly, yes. exactly. For and a reason, they're no good cars. Exactly. And for the fact that the, the Civic 1.8 is a much more elegant looking car, mm -hmm. much more much more of car than the Ballard. And because it's 2018, 2019, it's fresh comparatively. This thing will live for a thousand years. Yeah. So I, I'd rather go for the better looking car and bigger. So you'd, you'd rather I'd buy... I'd go with the Civic 1.8 Elegance. Yeah. I mean I'm going to put him in a Suzuki Swift. I'm going to take him out of his Honda. <laughs> 2022. Did you not see? Worked for Honda. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. No, that's fine. He's allowed to work for Honda. Did you not see the GM of uh, the CEO of Mercedes-Benz, what he jumped into <laughs> when he quit? Uh, so, so you taking him out of the Honda <laughs> and putting him into a brand new... Suzuki Swift, brand spanking new. Did you not hear my comment about buying Avis? You're forgetting something. Because they're, they're both Japanese cars. Car. <laughs> <laughs> it's an option. I mean, it's, it's, it's no, not, it's not an option. <laughs> okay, it is sorry. an option. Pudi says not an option. No. I'm with you, Pudi. I would say you, you, you and, and what GC said as well, they're all the same sort of thing. The, the Civic, the Ballard, or, or the Jazz. They're all brilliant cars. You go and drive all of them, decide on which one you prefer. And buy that. Doesn't matter which one you buy. You're going to get a car that you're going to give to your grandchildren. But, but you guys are forgetting something. I never said. I never Honda. said <laughs> it's not brilliant cars. I said give him another option. Sure. We did the Jazz. A no, <laughs> yeah, Jazz. Quite right. Let's give him another option. How about a Civic Type R? It's a Honda too. It's all about Hondas here. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> so there we go. go. You, you've, we've made your mind up for you. One of those three that we've recommended. Go Stay for it, bud. Because after the break, <laughs> Bucky's from my Suzu and Nissan go head to head. And find the perfect upgrade for a Jaguar enthusiast. Welcome back to Buyer's Guide. Brandon currently owns a fully serviced 2019 Hyundai Grand i10 with only 66,000 Ks on the clock. Brandon has a monthly budget of 6,000 Rand a month for a period of four years, excluding the insurance costs. He's open to vehicles from the second-hand market, except he doesn't want a VW Polo. He recently came across a 2018 Mercedes-Benz C180 with 70,000 Ks on the clock, listed at 380,000 Rand. Is this worth the purchase? Bradley? I mean, it's, it's a good car, um, but he wants to buy a car that's older and got higher mileage than what he has, which mm. for me doesn't make sense. That car will be out of maintenance uh, but it's fancy. cover. Anybody yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, you're going to look like an Uber driver. Yeah. Uber black. Uber but, black, um, yeah. I mean, it's a good car. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, but it is out of plan. And these cars, again, can be quite costly to repair if something goes wrong because they're very electronic. Um, so, but I mean, it's a good car. But the, in that bracket of 380 that he's talking about, there's just so much option in the market. Like, 
especially if he's looking at a used car. I mean, the, it's almost infinite as to what he could look at. Yeah, so, I mean, there's just so much for him to look at. I mean, I don't know. Where, I didn't say where he's based, but I mean, if I was in Joburg, I wouldn't be buying a C180 because I think you'd lose a wheel in the first week. You know, I don't think a sedan's <laughs> the right what, car to have. What does it make you live in, in Joburg? Because <laughs> anywhere in the country, yeah. unless it's Cape Town, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, follow the, also, it's not going to hold its value. Um, I would sort of buy an SUV. I'd buy something like that. Um, something with a little newer, a little bit less mileage to complement the fact that you've looked after your first car so well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ungani, yeah. once again, mm -hmm. new, brand new, 380, why can't you put him in something brand new? Ah, well, he wants a Mercedes Benz and a brand new one is like a million rand. I'll just keep the i10 to be honest. I mean, he's driven it, he's happy unless he's just at that stage where he wants to, you know. No, he. I think he's getting uh, a 6,000 rand a month probably from a company on a company deal. He, oh. doesn't, he doesn't say that he's actually selling the selling Hyundai. Selling the Hyundai. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to spend 6,000 Rand a month on a car, what would you put in? About 380,000 Rand would uh, cover that. Maybe a Grand Vitara Suzuki. Because with, with the budget he gave me here for 380, it falls outside his 6,000 budget for four years. It would be around 10,000 for his Mercedes. So he's going to be straining himself. And like I said, the maintenance on top of that, yeah. buying another tire. So yeah, it's just going to be a stressful time for him. So, so rather find something new or very, very low mileage, like one year old in that sort of price That's range. Strange, yes. Then have a look around and, and see what you can buy for that. And uh, you can get something like Bradley says, something that's an SUV that's one year old, 380,000 Rand, you'll, you'll find something mm. in, the, in that budget or to fit your 6,000 Rand a month budget. So approximately 6,000 Rand a month gives you, um, without a balloon, you're looking at about 250 to 300,000 Rand, yep. am I correct? Yeah. Somewhere in that yeah. region, mm. depending on the interest rate you're getting. So 250, 300,000 Rand, and there's quite a lot of good cars with you know, low mileage that you can find in that. You had a Hyundai, um, which you're very happy with. You know, something like a Creta or something. But you know what people do is they go out and they look and they see, oh, there's a Mercedes. <laughs> and I mean, it is. It's a great it car. It looks good and everything. But we forget. I mean, like you need a set of tires. And there's like, how much is a set of tires? 20,000 20 rand. Yep. What the hell are you mad? And then they've got low profile tires. And like Bradley yeah. says, you hit a pothole. And it's a tire and a rim. And so, you know, you've got to take those things in consideration. It was the, when buying a car, and I've noticed this, nobody ever looks at, hey, these tires, they just look, oh, tires are good. They're brand new. They don't look at it that when I need to replace them, they're going to cost me 10 grand a tire. Yeah. 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 And, and it's just the uh, excitement of purchasing a new vehicle. Now you just buy second hand from the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Bang them on. It's fine. One, one big tire, one small tire. What the hell? Stick them on. They work. All right, our next question is for Khalif. Ben is interested in buying a second-hand vehicle. Considering the inflated prices of new cars, he's interested in the following options. Mazda CX-5 2.2 diesel, Mazda CX-60, Honda CR-V, and a second-hand Porsche Cayenne. He's interested in the 3-liter diesel variant of the Porsche, which has been discontinued. He intends on buying the vehicle from a Porsche dealer as it comes with the added benefits of a one-year warranty and service plan. Guys, what do you think of that purchase, Pongani? That Porsche? Uh, the Porsche is a no for me. He, s he seems... Why? He's buying from a Porsche dealer? Because... Uh, years guaranteed, warranty, full service plan? Uh, I would have said yes to the Porsche, but he mentioned current market dynamics. So it means he's conscious of his money. So just to save him trouble down the road, I'd rather just go for the oh, CX-5. Yeah. But diesels are brilliant, and you can get a lot of good deals. Yeah. Yes. A 2.2 diesel, diesel, Bradley, your mm. thoughts? Buy the Porsche. Yeah, I mean, the Porsche, he says it's got time out. It's over 100,000. Um, it is a good car. It's a very good car, very nice car, very good-looking yeah. car. The diesel's quite a good engine. It goes nicely, reasonable consumption. So, I mean, it's a nice car, but it's got 100,000 Ks, and again, if... As much as it's got the warranty and stuff like that, again, tires, if you need to buy tires, you have to pay for tires. And the tire on that car is, has to be bought from Porsche in order mm -hmm. to maintain the warranty. Mm -hmm. And they like to charge for those. And so on. And, like, <laughs> you know, and the brakes. Talk about things like when it needs brake pads. And yeah. The, the, yeah. So the front I mean, the cost of maintenance yeah. in that car, even with the service plan and the warranty, which runs out very quickly after 12 months. One year is no time. Yeah, it's no time. Um, and essence, by law, they have to give you one year warranty on the car yes. anyway. So. So there's not actually... They're not doing any favors. Yeah, wherever you buying it from, it's going to be the same option. So um, it's got to be financial decision. Can you afford, if you get a 40, 50,000 rand bull, 
If you can't, if that's not something that you can plan for, I agree with him. Let's go for the other cars. They're all very, very nice cars, very good cars. I know Segi's going to say CRV. But, uh, CRV's nice, but I love a CRV. I but I prefer the CX-5 because you can buy like a 2.2 yeah. diesel. In the CRV, you can't find the diesel. They only came out for like two years, and there's very few of them around. And if you do find one, they, they are high mileage and that. So if you can get yourself a nice uh, Mazda CX-5 2.2 diesel, it's a good-looking car, very reliable engine, very fuel efficient, lots of power. Very so underrated car. Yeah, yeah. And also, stolen. Oh yeah. Yeah, also not popular <laughs> with the thieves, which the yeah. Porsche is a high-risk car. But so even, yeah. even if you took, take that out, the Porsche's running costs are crazy. And remember, it'll most probably be a Porsche that's, he doesn't say what year it is, maybe five, six years old. So you buy it, and you know, next year's the seventh year. Eight, bef you know, in three years' time, the thing's, you know, old now. And now what you paid for it, and there's a reason why it falls into the same price bracket as that of the um, Mazdas yeah. and things like that and CRVs, is because you can pick them up for, you know, 250, 300,000 Rand because people don't want it because... Because the cost of it Because it's like, hey, something breaks, I'm going to die. You know, it's going to yeah. cost you a fortune. So rather go for something that's proven reliable, you'll, you'll get a newer Mazda for that, and it'll, it'll last you 20, 30 years, at least. Okay, we're going to take a short break, but when we get back, we advise a viewer on whether he should keep or get rid of his Opal Zafira. And we help a viewer locate a trustworthy dealer to buy their truck for transportation services. Hello and thank you for tuning in to Buyer's Guide. Marlon drives a 2006 Opel Zafira 1.6 Essential with 260,000 kilometers on the clock. Having owned the car for a decade, and he recently had his Opel present challenges, particularly with the PCV valve and oil management. The oil readings on the dipstick vary daily, posing concerns. Marlon wants to know if he should fix the PCV valve or opt to sell the Opel and buy his long-term favorite vehicle, the VW Amarok. He has no particular budget as yet, as he intends on saving up for the um. Okay, fix or get rid of? Um, Bradley? So I, th I see he wants to retire at 58. Looks like his cars work harder than he does. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, the Opel Zafira is a good car, um, but it is quite long in the tooth at 260,000 mm -hmm. cars. Um, and this probably is just one of the first few things to start going. Um, you know, everything will start wearing and as it goes along. Um, even if it is well maintained, there's perishable things that pop. So I, I would probably look at selling it. Would I buy an Amarok? Um, those are expensive to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, and a very different car to the Zafira. So it's yeah. heavy on fuel. You know, it's a big car, maintenance. And it's quite an but expensive car. it's much car. better than the Zafira, Bongani. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. The problem is it doesn't say, it doesn't have a budget. And we don't know how long it would take him to save for the Amarok. But I guess in the meantime, maybe he he's going to use his retirement fund. Yeah, maybe he's got eight years to save up for it, and then that's great. I mean, if you had to buy a brand new Amarok out the box, I mean, it's good for 10 years at least. It's a strong car. It's a yeah. good car. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Very, very nice car. But expensive. But an expensive car. But they all are. I mean, yeah. you know, when you're buying a car that's you know, f more than 500,000 Rand, they're expensive to, ma to maintain. Bongani, would you keep the Zafira or just say bye-bye? Time to go. Ah, uh, no, I think the Zafira needs to go. Uh, he sounds like he's ready for that next step, so he should go for his Amarok, if he can afford it. If he can't, fix the Zafira while he saves up for the Amarok. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would get rid of the Zafira on a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. 260,000 kilometers, it is really getting to the end of its life. And not only for the engine, for other pieces <laughs> that go with it. And you also find with those cars, if you needing little bits and pieces for it, you can't get them anymore. Starting to run out yeah. of parts. Yeah. You, you can't even get the parts from uh, Opel anymore. So it's not even worth keeping it. So if it's still running now fairly good, it's got some sort of value to it. I mean, I don't think it's worth much more than 25, 30,000 Rand. Yeah, for that's about like the that. number I would put on yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, so you're going to be spending your saving money repairing it all the time. So yeah. It's going to take you longer to get that Amarok. Um, you might as well just sell your um, Zafira, use that as a deposit on an Amarok. An Amarok's not bad, but obviously certain things you need to check. if you. Uh, buying a two-liter version, the diesel version, make sure that it's ha had a cam belt replacement done. It should be done every 100,000 kilometers. Check the service history and make sure it's all done. Um, and there's quite a few of them around. They're, they're not bad, but as Bradley says, you know, it's an expensive car, so the maintenance costs on them are fairly high. So just have a look around. If you like Amarok, then buy one. 
but, um, but you do know, your homework first. He has no particular budget as yet and intends yeah. saving money. So if he sells his uh, Zafira now, what do you guys want him to do? <laughs> Buy the tires for the Amarok. Okay, we're going to end off with things with a question from Peter. A regular viewer from Zambia, he seeks to purchase a second-hand five-ton light truck from South Africa for long-distance hauling. He's concerned about not finding a genuine dealer, thus risking potential of falling victim to scammers. You know, well, this does happen. What advice can you give him that will assist him to finding a genuine dealer without being scammed? Bradley, you... My, my advice, yeah. I mean, the guy's spending at least 400,000 Rand on a truck, right? Get in an airplane and come down to South Africa. Mm, five tons, yeah. And go and have, come have a look at the truck, number one. There's tons of truck dealers around. Yeah, excuse <laughs> the pun. <laughs> yeah. um, and I would just make sure that that dealer is registered with the RMR and is a, a proper dealership. I mean, once you get to it, you, you'll find a million guys on Auto Trader and all those things. Come have, select five or six trucks, fly to South Africa, come have a look at them, look at the truck properly, and then buy it. Don't try and buy it remotely from Zambia. Yeah. Check I think Google that's a reviews. Bad idea. Yeah. There's so many ways to actually check to make sure that there's, there's no scams. And, and don't, you know, that's kind of a thing you don't buy on like Marketplace. Oh, if you buy this truck for me, I will deliver it to you <laughs> oh. in Zambia, personally myself, and I will fly myself back to South Africa. Oh, man. Um, just appears my bank details. Did deposit, deposit the 600,000 yeah. rand, yeah. yeah. Do, Bungani? do uh, not do that. I agree. I agree with Bradley. Just buy from a reputable dealer. Just avoid the funny places you're not sure of. Just find a name. Yeah, yeah that find a Toyota yeah. after a second-hand uh, truck dealer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever. What you should buy. Like but I mean, the, the big used car truck, because if you want to use truck, are all based around the airport. I mean, Yes, they're, they're all around they're the airport. Uh, Absolutely Israel right. And, yes. and yeah. there's some really reputable, long-standing yeah. quality dealers out there yes. that have like two, 3,000 used trucks for you to look at and stuff like that. So, I mean, it could be a land in the morning, leave in the evening sort With of With your trip. truck, yes. Yeah, so... I'd, it's a no-brainer. You're spending that type of money. Fly down to South Africa. Come have a look at the truck. Make sure the dealer you're dealing with is proper, and you'll be fine. Yeah, don't 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 marketplace. Don't <laughs> yeah yeah. Don't WhatsApp <laughs> chat. Deal. Go and go and go and have a look at the proper dealers. Yeah. Definitely. And, and I think you know the, the thing to do before you come is to do your homework in terms of what do you actually need. You need a five-ton truck. What make do you need? Do you need a a Hino truck or a Mercedes truck or whatever it is. Isuzu, you know, whatever, yeah. Isuzu, whatever. Decide on what truck you want and then look for that truck on the online portals that sell trucks and then see where those dealers are. Do your Google, Google research. Phone the dealers from, see if they've got, go, like Bradley says, jump on an aeroplane, spend a couple of thousand rand because it'll save you a lot more money than when you get scammed. Just fly down, have a look at them, drive it back. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's show. Thank you, Bongani and Bradley, for joining us and all your helpful advice. Thank you very much. Thanks. Until next time, please buckle up and, of course, stay safe on the roads.